The method we're going to use though today is something called substitution and elimination. You guys already know that we can solve systems by graphing. And when we graph, we can have one of three things happen. On the board, we say we can have parallel lines, which have no solutions. We can have intersecting lines, which have one solution. Or we can have lines that coincide, which have an infinite number of solutions. We can still have those three possibilities when we work it algebraic. And I'll show you how that's going to work here in a minute. The first method we're going to look at is something called substitution. So I need you to highlight this for me right here. This is the first method we're going to look at, substitution. Now when you think of that word substitution, substitution basically means we take something out and replace it with something else. That's exactly what we're going to be doing here, taking something out and replacing it with something else. Basically the steps that we're going to need for substitution are right over here. We've got step one, step two, step three, step four. Those are the four things we need to do for substitution. All right, so let's see here. Our first system they gave us is x minus y equals negative 11. And 7x plus 4y equals negative 22. I want to know what is the solution to that system. So the first thing they want us to do is solve for a variable in one of the equations. They just said solve for a variable. They didn't say solve for x. They didn't say solve for y. It's our choice. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first equation here. And I'm going to solve it for x. It's my choice. Now, the reason I chose to solve for x is because in order to do that, all I have to do is move my y over. So now I have x is equal to negative 11 plus y. All I did was move the y over. So that takes care of my first step here. Solve for a variable in one of the equations. Step 2 says, in the other equation, replace this variable with its equivalent expression. So now I'm going to move on to step 2 here. It says here, use the other equation. So I'm going to use the 7x plus 4y equals negative 22. What I'm going to do is replace the x with its equivalent expression, which in our case is negative 11 plus y. Everything else is going to stay the same in the equation. This is why we call it substitution. So we're taking something out and replacing it with something else. Now notice here I've got an equation, and the only variable in that equation is y. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for that y. 7 times negative 11 is going to give us a negative 77. 7 times y is going to give us a 7y. And of course we still have 4y equals a negative 22. By the way, notice we're doing step number 3 right now. We're solving for the variable. We're working on step number 3. Notice we can combine those y's together. If I put a 7y plus 4y together, that gives me how many y's? 11 y's. So I got a negative 7, negative 77, plus 11y equals negative 22. I'm still solving for y, so I'm going to add 77 over here. Negative 22 plus 77, what is that? Huh? 55? 55. And the last thing I'm going to do is divide by 11. So 55 divided by 11 is a 5. So the x value is 5. Bad news is... We're only halfway done. All we've found so far is the x value. We still need to figure out what the y value is in this system here. So how are we going to do that? Well, if you look at step number 4 here, 4 says substitute the answer, which is 5 in our case. Substitute the answer into, the, uh, into another equation to find the value of the other variable. So what are they talking about here? Step number 4. We're going to take this 5. And we're going to plug it in for one of these x's up here. We can either use the first equation or we can use the second. Whatever looks easier to work. I'm going to use the first equation. I'm going to take out x and replace it with 5. Isn't it y? Oh, yeah, you're right. It is y. That should be y equals y, not x. We can still use the same equation, though, right? We can still use x minus y equals negative 11. 
The only difference is now we're plugging in the 5 for the Y, not the X. Very good. Remember, I told you I do that on purpose. I'm trying to make sure you're paying attention. Good job. One person with a waking car. Y'all um, <laughs> didn't want to say anything, right? Alright, so let's solve for the X. We know what Y is, it's 5. Let's solve for the X. Um, let's add 5. And a negative 11 plus 5, negative 11 plus 5 would give us a negative 6. So now we have both the x value and the y value. However, usually when we write the answer, we write the answer as ordered pair. So what would the ordered pair be? Negative 6, positive 5. There's our solution. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, couldn't I just graph that and find the intersection point and it would have given me negative 6, 5? Absolutely. Give us the same exact answer. So, why are we doing this? Well, how many of us have one of these calculators that it can actually graph? Some of us do, some of us don't. So, this is why we got to make sure we have other backup plans. All right, so this is called substitution. There is quite a bit of work involved here, guys. Um, it's probably one of my least favorite substitution. There are some other methods that we'll be looking at, but we are required to show you substitution. All right, let's keep going here. Now, on this next part, they give us four different systems. Now, we're not going to necessarily solve these right now. All they want us to do is look at those systems and identify, right here it says, identify which variable, which variable would be the easiest to solve for. So right now what we're going to do is identify which one would be the easiest to solve, which would be the easiest first step. So if we look at the first equation or the first system, which variable would be the easiest to get by itself? Why? On which one? The first equation or the second equation? The first equation. That would probably get the y by itself. So circle that y. Probably the one that I did by itself. If you look at the second system, which variable would you get by itself? So which one? For me, I'd probably choose the X right here. Would it make it wrong if you chose to get Y by itself? No, it wouldn't make it wrong. Might make it a little bit harder for you, but it's not going to make it wrong. Um, look at the third equation over there. Which one would you get by itself? Probably the y right here. Now, I, know, I don't know if you've noticed it, but all these ones that I'm choosing, do you notice something about the uh, y value and guys that I'm choosing? What do they have in front of them? A 1. Right? So try to choose something that doesn't have a number in front of it or a 1. Okay? It's going to make it a little bit easier. Now unfortunately, sometimes that's not the case. If you look at the last system, there is no variable that doesn't have a number in front of it. So, we would still have to choose one. Um, it really wouldn't make a difference for me. I would probably choose this one right here. If you choose something different, it wouldn't necessarily make it wrong. Might make it a little hard, just not wrong. All right, so all we did was identify what's easier to solve. So now let's take it a step further. It says here, number one, now solve the system, showing your work. So this was the first example they gave us. We said we were going to get the first equation and get y by itself. So right now I'm doing step number one. I want y by itself. So that's pretty easy. All I'm going to do is move the 4x over to the other side by subtracting it. So that's going to give me y equals negative 4x plus 3. I just did step one. I got a variable by itself. Step two. Use the other equation, which in our case is going to be the 7x plus 2y equals 4. Use the other equation, but replace the variable with its equivalent expression. So we're going to replace y with a negative 4x plus 3. Everything else is going to remain the same. And from here we're going to solve for the x. So 2 times the negative 4x is the negative 8x. 2 times 3 is going to give us a 6. So here's what I've got so far. 
Now I'm going to combine the like terms. 7x minus 8x is going to give me a negative 1x. By the way, notice all this work that we're doing right now, that is step number three. The work that we're doing right now is step number three. That subtract 6. 4 minus 6. What's 4 minus 6? Negative 2. We're almost there. Divide by negative 1. And a negative 2 divided by negative 1 makes it a positive 2. So our x value is positive 2. We're almost there. We still need to figure out what y is. So we're going to take this 2 that we just found, and we're going to come over here and plug it in for one of these x. The choice is yours. You can use the first equation or the second. I'm going to go ahead and use the first. There it is with 3 plugged in for the x in the first equation. Solve for the y. 4 times 2, of course, is 8. Subtract 8. And 3 minus 8 would give me a negative 5. So my y value here is negative 5. However, don't leave your answer like that. I want you to write these answers as ordered pairs. So what's the ordered uh, pair going to be? 2, negative 5 or negative 5, 2? 2, negative 5. X value has to come first. So there's our solution to the system. Again, guys.